Welcome back. Now, it's going to sound like a movie, but the story we are about to hear is very real and close to the hearts of everyone involved. The life of a young girl in Berlin was changed during World War II, and nearly 70 years later, she was able to meet the man who had no idea he meant so much to her. Krista Reynolds was the young girl, and Colonel Gail Halverson was the candy bomber she was able to reunite with. Mm -hmm. Krista's daughter, Heidi, also joins us. So, Krista, I'd like to start with you, my dear. What made you decide to write this book? Well, actually, um, it started, I started writing it because I wanted it for my family. But then it took on a life of its own, and it came out to a book. <laughs> so and, and it's a book uh, about your life? About my life um, during the war, and after the war, and all the suffering we did. And, you know, and it's, it's kind of sad, but it's, you know, it's unique, but it has a lot of, it's emotional too, you know, so. Absolutely. But, and so maybe tell us a little bit about what life was like early on in the war. Well, we were in a, um, what, what life was like in early on in the war, I'm trying to think, um, it's just a struggle, you know, and we lived in the cellar a lot. For the first five years of my life, um, I was in and out of a, um, a cellar, I guess, you know, where we, and, um, <clears throat> And it was terrible in the cellar, you know, it was musky and um, dusty and, um, you know, and we heard the, um, this, every time the sing, uh, science went on, I mean, well, we had to hurry to get in the cellar to start with. Mm -hmm. And then um, sometimes we could hear the airplane coming, or the airplanes were loaded with bombs, so you could hear them come, they made a real weird sound, you know. And then we got into the cellar really quick, and then we just sit there, and then you had all these terrified people in a cellar, um, everybody scared. And if, <coughs> excuse me, if there was a f um, close hit, of course, then the cellar started to buckle up, kind of, you know. And then dust was coming down, and people were screaming, you know. So it's just, you know, a lot of, lot of destruction and fear, fear, much, you know, a lot of fear. Yeah, I could only imagine. Now, what finally changed? Um, well, then, in, I think in 1948, um, <coughs> the airlift started. And, um, well, what, the way the airlift started, because I'm trying to think what, what changed. Well, in, in 1948, um, every time they thought that things were going to get better, it wasn't really just about the war. It was like an eight-year-long nightmare before the recovery even happened. But in 1948, the Russians were trying to get the Allies to leave and they were basically trying to get the Berliners to um, commit to communism by starving them. They, they ended up blocking all of the transportation in and out, the land transportation, and they were essentially trying to starve and freeze to death all of the Berliners so that they would agree to communism, and that's what led to the beginning of the Berlin Airlift. Wow, mm. so that's, that's incredible. And then, Colonel, of course, we want to say hello, and thank you so much for joining us. Well, it's an honor to be here at this special place, like Channel 9. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just an amazing thing to have you on. Now, you are the candy bomber. That's what they tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so then, how is it that you became known as the candy bomber? Well, I'm a kid off the farm. When the airlift started and I volunteered, f flew to Berlin, I wanted to get some movies. So I got shooting movies of airplanes coming over the bond out buildings barbed wire keeping the people from getting hit with airplanes. 30 kids came right up to the barbed wire against me. Look at this very uniform I'm wearing right now. Looking at that, bombing them, chasing her in the bomb shelter uh, just before. But they were friendly. They knew what the Soviets were. They knew all about that. And they were coming at them. They wanted to get the island of freedom out of, from, in the middle of Germany because they couldn't sell communism with a free Berlin with free agency going on in black and white. So I was shooting the pictures. And then I, I turned to leave, and, and uh, not one of them, all the time, that they, not one begged for anything. They just, they're so grateful for flour to be free, they wouldn't beg for anything else. And so that, that, that's how it started. That because of that, I turned to leave, and every time before, in the uniform, other countries, they'd shake you down. Kids didn't. So I five steps and went back and gave them two sticks of gum, and, <laughs> and the, the kids got the wrapper, as for they didn't fight. And, Kids that just got the half a stick, the others tore, they tore off the wrapper and passed, and the kids smelled it. Their eyes got me. And then he said, he said, no, what happened? I was going to drop chocolate. If, if smell on a piece of wrapper or something, what would a chocolate bar do? And that's where I got in trouble. Wow. Because <laughs> the military wasn't really on board with this no, idea. No, no. 
Scrooge would have done the same thing I did if they saw the kids and not yeah. one begged for anything yeah. when they didn't have enough to eat. Yeah. And so that's the trigger. And then, wow. then I just said, come back tomorrow, and I'll drop, if you share it, I'll drop chocolate bars for all of you out of the airplane. And they didn't believe that for a while, but they did, and they said, how would you know what you, and I said, wiggle the wings of the airplane. <laughs> you know, the airplane wings wiggle. If that's the one, just watch that one. Watch that one. That's the chocolate. And that's what started it. And that's the one. And then Krista, you know, what, what did the Kenny Bomber, how did that kind of affect your life during that time? Oh, it did affect my life. First of all, I never got a parachute. <laughs> <laughs> you sure did chase him around. Yeah, I was, yeah, I, was I mean, uh, yeah, I, I wanted a parachute so bad because we didn't have no chocolate or anything like that in those days. And I knew there was chocolate on there and gum on there and all this good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and um, of course, um, I saw parachutes coming down, but um, it never, I was too small, you know, to get there because too many people were just running for the parachutes when they came down. And um, so anyway, um, I used to lay in bed at night and pray and hoping that I'm gonna get a parachute coming down in our courtyard. But never happened. But you know what happened? <laughs> 70, 70 years later, almost 70 years later, I met this wonderful man. Well, here's your parachute. Oh, wow. There you yes, go. My oh, There's a parachute. I love it. I love it. Amazing. It'll even work. You, you can throw it off oh, the roof I, and it'll open. Do okay. <laughs> don't let somebody get the chocolate. Oh, I have the chocolate. <laughs> Is it, how there even you did you found the colonel 70 years later? Um, well, actually, what happened, um, as we were writing the book, yeah. um, but my husband was actually writing the book, you know, so anyway, I. <clears throat> He met somebody by chance, and he was a friend of the colonel. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, and so my husband was talking to, you know, him. And he said, oh, I bet Colonel Halverson would be, you know, interested in it. And one thing led into another. Oh, my they gosh. They emailed back and forth. And then we went to his house and presented him the book. Yeah. Oh, oh I love the book. Wrote some nice things in the front, too. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. This story is amazing. It's amazing that it's right here close to us that you guys, this whole it's story so wrapped, comes together. It's just so wonderful I finally got to meet him because he is my hero. Oh, that's oh. so amazing. And I thank you both so much for coming here and sharing your story thank with us. You. And I know people People can read more in the book, which they definitely should. But thank you all so much thank for coming. Thank you so much, and thank you for the passion. <laughs> oh, no, absolutely. And you can experience more of this amazing story in Krista's book, Born to War. They can be purchased on Amazon, in the iBook store, and on Kindle. Definitely pick that up.